In this section, we're going to look at two more applications of integration. We're going to first look at arc length, and then we're going to look at the average value of function, understand how to derive the formula, but also what it means. So let's start with arc length and assume that to be able to find the length of an arc, to estimate it, what we can do is we can partition it into a number of points that fall on the curve and just draw a straight line between each of those points. We could then compute the distance using our good old distance formula, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Um, and then what we could do from there is just add all those up and that would give us an approximation. Of course, a way for us to get a better approximation is to get more points, okay? So what we could do is we could get a point here and here and here on the curve, et cetera. And we could just keep doing that, okay? Now, theoretically, what we prefer to do is get an infinite number of these arc lengths or the uh, distance between the two points. Now, let's see if we can derive the formula for the arc length. And it's actually a fairly easy derivation. So remember, we have our distance formula and we could think of x2 minus x1 as delta x. And we could think of y2 minus y1 as delta y. So that means we get this formula. And then we could sneakily factor out a delta x square from both these terms. Now, obviously there's no delta x square in the second term. So that means we would have a delta x square in the denominator, all right? So that's where we get this. And if we don't trust it, distribute back through and you'll get back up to here. Now, what we could do is we could split this off outside the radical. And then from there, we could rewrite the delta y square, delta x square as the quantity of delta y over delta x square. And then we know that delta y over delta x is the same thing as dy dx, which is the same thing as the derivative of the function. So this is another way that we could write the distance between the two points um, if we know the function, all right? So of course, like we said, we'd like to put, take an infinitesimal number of these partitions. And so from there, what we could do is we could just add those up as the limit of the number of partitions goes towards infinity. And finally, what we could do is we could rewrite that as an integral, okay? So the length would be equal to the integral from A to B, square root of one plus F prime X squared DX. So let's take a look at a really basic example of this. And we're gonna do this one in two ways, okay? So we wanna graph and compute the length of each of the curves below. All right, so we have three x minus one over two x or two comma four. All right, so one way to do this without doing any sort of calculus is because it's a line, we can use the distance formula. Okay, so f at two is going to be five, and then f at four is going to be 11. All right? And I just substituted those back in for x. Okay, so I just plugged back in both of those points. And so this would be equal to our y1, and this would be our y2, and x1 would be our two, and then x2 would be our four. And so we can use the distance formula. And again, this is just doing it without calculus because it's a straight line. And then we're gonna use calculus to verify the answer. Um, we're gonna use, remember, x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. And so that's gonna give us the square root of four minus two squared plus 11 minus five squared. And that's gonna turn into four plus 11 minus five is six, six squared is 36. So we get square root of 40 or two roots of 10. All right, so let's hold on to that answer. All right, because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the, um, the definition that we can use for calculus to find this. All right. Now, of course, it says to graph it, and we know it's a straight line, and we're in quadrant one. All right. So we have the point two five. So it's right here, and then we have the point four eleven. All right. So our curve, really not that much of a curve, just looks something like this. All right. And so we know that the length already is two roots of ten by using our distance formula. All right, so here's how we're gonna use the calculus formula. First thing we're gonna do, find the derivative, okay? So F prime, if F is three X plus, or three X minus one, F prime of X is just going to be three. And so we substitute this back in, we're gonna end up with the length 
is going to be equal to the integral from two to four, right? Because those are our x values. The square root of one plus three square dx. And so this clearly just turns into root 10, right? So this is going to be integral two to four square root 10 dx, which is going to be the same as root 10 x from two to four. And we know that if x ranges from two to four, then the distance is going to be two, all right? So that's going to be 10, four minus root 10 times two. And that just turns into two roots of 10, which we already knew, okay? Um, in this example, because it's a line, there's really no benefit or detriment to using either. Okay, they're both equally as quote unquote rigorous, even though they're neither of them are all that rigorous. All right, so hopefully that helps you to understand, first of all, where this formula comes from for the arc length. And then second of all, a really basic example of this, okay, just to kind of see what it is that we're looking for. Now, in subsequent examples, we're gonna look at more rigorous functions and try to, find, to see some of the techniques to be able to find the arc lengths of those.